Good morning and greetings from Evanston, Illinois. My name is Fritz Berger and I'm an assistant director here at the Northwestern University Undergraduate Admissions Office. It is my pleasure to be presenting to you this morning. Um, really excited to share about Northwestern in these very uncertain times. Um, want to you know take a quick moment to not only introduce myself though but also my counterpart who's going to be presenting with me this morning as i mentioned i'm an assistant director here at northwestern um, i'm responsible for a variety of states here in the midwest um, and i actually did graduate from northwestern back in 2014 with a major in journalism minor in political science and also received our integrated marketing communications certificate during my four years on campus, I was involved with a variety of different student groups, but the one that was nearest and dearest to my heart was the marching band. I played trumpet my first three years and then was a drum major helping lead the band my senior year. A lot of my closest friends and coolest experiences came about being a part of NUM, the Northwestern University Marching Band. So that's a little about myself. I'm gonna let uh, my counterpart Candace introduce herself. Hi there folks, my name is Candice LeBlanc and I am a recent graduate of Northwestern. I graduated this past June on the dual degree track. I graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in Creative Writing from our College of Arts and Sciences and a Bachelor of Music in Opera Performance from our Beaton School of Music. I'm originally from Long Beach, California and that's where I'm coming to all of you today. And outside of my work with the admissions office as a senior admissions counselor and a tour guide coordinator, one of the things that I was really involved with is our ever thriving acapella community. I was a part of a co-ed acapella group known as the X Factors and we got to perform every single quarter and also go on tour during our winter breaks. With that, I'll pass it back to Fritz. Fantastic, thank you so much, Candace. Before diving into everything today, I just want to take a quick moment um, to first off, wish everyone a really great start to this um, unprecedented school year that's already underway for some students and some students are gonna be starting here in another couple of weeks. Um, whether you're in person, virtual, wherever, I hope um, you all are staying healthy and you have a really great start um, to your school year, whether it's gonna be your senior year of high school, junior, or for those eager beavers, sophomore and freshmen. Um, additionally, I just wanna pass on um, our thoughts are with those who've been impacted by Hurricane Laura um, and the fires currently um, in California, keeping you all in mind um, during this time as well. Um, so with that all in mind, we're gonna shift the focus to Northwestern. Um, during the information session today, we're gonna kind of focus on three main topics. We're gonna talk about the academic culture that exists here at Northwestern, what it's like to be a student um, in the classroom, what opportunities are available to you. We're gonna talk about the social life, what it means to be a wildcat day in and day out. And then last, we're gonna really focus in on the admissions process and financial aid opportunities that exist here at Northwestern. Um, before diving into the academics, so I always really want to highlight um, that the college admissions process is always stressful, and it's unfortunately that way. Um, I wish, especially if you're looking at schools like Northwestern, there can feel like an unnecessary burden. Um, and I want to let you all know that you are going to be successful wherever you go to college, all right? Do not let a brand name, a ranking, um, any sort of prestige be the driving force in this process, all right? Where you go will not define who you'll become, all right? Whether you go to Northwestern University here in Evanston or Northwestern College in Orange City, Iowa, I can guarantee you, you're gonna be successful as long as you work hard, work well with other people, and take advantage of new opportunities that come across your path. I really believe that those are the three fundamental keys to success in college and in life broadly. Um, so as we you know, embark on this admissions journey, um, know that admissions officers like myself are here to assist you along this path, but don't put so, too much pressure on yourself and make this process more than what it needs to be. It's one step along your life path. So with that all in mind, let's talk a little bit about the academic culture here at Northwestern. Uh, a couple of years back, the university released a slogan um, that says, and is in our DNA. While it's a very 
um, it's kind of silly palindrome. Um, I'll be the first to admit that. Um, it really does speak to the student experience here at Northwestern. The vast majority of our students are able to pursue multiple passions, whether it be credential earning, like double majoring, major minoring, certificates, all that jazz, or just being able to marry your interests of an academic field with your personal passion in your social life. We really wanna foster those kind of opportunities and that type of growth um, while you're in college. To make that all possible, we have six undergraduate colleges that exist here at Northwestern. The largest of them is the Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences that houses our different uh, natural science, social science, and humanities programs. We have the McCormick School of Engineering and Applied Science um, that houses our different engineering majors, including computer science, mechanical engineering, and a variety of others. The School of Communication has produced some of our most famous alumni, folks like Stephen Colbert and Seth Meyers of late night television fame, Heather Headley of Broadway, all got their start at the School of Communication. The School of Education and Social Policy is designed for students who wanna make an impact down the road in the classroom or in the policy sphere. Um, then we also have the Beenan School of Music that produces um, really profound and prolific um, musicians, but also gives you that liberal arts um, education in that conservatory setting. And the last but certainly not least is the Medill School of Journalism, Media and Integrated Marketing Communications that I graduated from and countless Pulitzer Prize winning reporters and marketers who are shaping um, how we consume media in the 21st century um, come out of. If you decide to apply to Northwestern, you're gonna be asked to select one of those six schools to apply specifically to. Now, just because you decide, you know, coming in that you want to pursue, let's say, economics in the Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences does not mean you're going to get boxed in during your four years at Northwestern. If anything, we're going to push you to take classes from across all six schools. You're going to have the opportunity to double major across the six schools, take classes across a variety, and even switch and transfer between the six schools if you discover that your passion coming into college doesn't really match your interests going forward. And I'll let Candace kind of talk a little bit about that journey from the student perspective. Most definitely. So as I mentioned before, I was a dual degree student, but I still was able to take courses outside of my two specializations of creative writing and opera. In the College of Arts and Sciences, I took ethnic studies courses, classics courses, Slavic courses, pretty much you name it, and I tried it. And in addition on my being inside of my degree, in addition to voice major, I also took uh, music theory and oral skills and musicology courses. And I actually now can say that now that I've graduated, I have taken courses across all the six undergraduate schools, um, ranging from a applied mathematics course in the McCormick School of Engineering, a podcasting course in our School of Journalism, a radio, or pardon me, not a radio, a video essay course in our um, School of Communication, and one of our most popular courses in our School of Education and Social Policy, Marriage 101, Building Loving and Lasting Relationships. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself of talking about my academic journey. Many of you are at the beginning of your college search, and some of you may know exactly what you want to study. I definitely fell into that category as I was looking for schools. I knew that I wanted to study both creative writing and opera, and with Northwestern already having the dual degree program previously established, I was able to study both of my passions with the same amount of zeal. But some of you may not know what you want to study, and that is completely okay. Here at Northwestern, we like to call ourselves a place of discovery. So my friend Ben came to Northwestern as a chemistry major. And after taking around two quarters of chemistry courses, he realized he didn't really like chemistry. He also really wasn't that good at it. So he talked to his academic advisor. And so she recommended that he try cognitive science, something that was still sciencey, but most definitely not chemistry. So my friend Ben went on, took another two quarters of cog sci. At this point, he was halfway through his sophomore year. And he just didn't really like cognitive science. And he was pretty sure at this point he didn't like science at all. So he went back to his academic advisor and said, please help me, how am I gonna graduate on time? I don't know what I wanna major in. And after having a pretty lengthy conversation with his advisor, Ben realized that his most favorite classes weren't his science classes, but actually his language courses. So my friend Ben actually just graduated this past June as a German studies major, very happily, on time. And I think that just goes to show the wonderful relationship between students and their academic advisors. The moment you step foot on Northwestern's campus, you have an academic advisor. And if you're enrolled in the College of Arts and Sciences, your academic advisor is also your first year seminar professor. 
And throughout your time at Greek Western, with every additional specialization you add, whether it's a major, minor, certificate, or a pre-professional track, you get additional advisors. And one thing that's worth noting is that here at Northwestern, we have a six to one student to teacher ratio, which lends itself to smaller classes. The smallest class that I've ever taken was a 8 a.m. three person keyboard skills class, very nice and intimate. And if you do like lectures, we do have those larger um, lecture style learning, but only 2% of courses have 100 students or more. And those are typically your larger introduction style courses. So think intro to psychology, intro to econ. But for any course that has even more than 40 students, the professor that teaches normal lecture is required to have a separate discussion section taught by the teacher's assistant or TA. So my class, Marriage 101, was one of the largest courses I've, take, I've taken. It was 190 students. So we had our Tuesday courses with our phenomenal professor, Dr. Solomon. And then on Thursdays, we would go from that 190 person class to a 15 person discussion section led by teacher's assistants. That's a really great way of working on problem sets and maybe brushing up on essays as well. And like I mentioned with my friend Ben, academic advisors who are also faculty members on Northwestern's campus are really great assets, whether you're trying to figure out your major or also just navigating the quarter system for the first time, like many students are, which Chris can talk more about the system that we operate on. Awesome. Thank you so much, Candice. Yeah, the quarter system is a really um, fundamental part of the Northwestern education. So for those of you that aren't familiar, you're probably a little more, um, you've heard about the semester schedule that exists in most college and universities, also very similar to your high schools probably. Um, at most colleges and universities, you'll typically take anywhere from four to six classes per semester. At Northwestern, we have four academic terms that students are able to take classes, fall, winter, spring, and summer quarter. Um, each is around 10, 11 weeks long, um, but students aren't going to school all year round. Most do take that summer quarter off um, and are usually doing some sort of internship, some sort of summer job. Maybe they're conducting research. Maybe you're at home crashing on the couch. It's really up to you. Um, but those other three quarters that you're gonna be on campus, um, you're often gonna be taking around four, maybe five courses. Um, and that really allows you a lot of flexibility because you end up taking 20% more classes um, on the quarter system than you would on the traditional semester based schedule. And that's what opens up a lot of opportunities for students to really kind of discover and search and explore a variety of academic opportunities afforded to them here at Northwestern. As Candace was saying, you can come in with a very clear path and get a deep dive in that. Um, you can also come in and have an idea and then have to completely abandon the idea. We want to make sure that every student, wherever you are in your own academic journey, is able um, to get the education that you're really searching for during your four years um, on campus at Northwestern. Um, you also keep hearing us throw out the terms majors, minors, and certificate programs. The only difference between a major, minor, and certificate at Northwestern is the number of classes you'll take um, to receive that credential. A major at Northwestern is going to require between 11 and 17 classes. A minor is gonna be between seven and 10 courses. And then certificate programs are really just mini minors with usually around four to six classes per certificate, maybe with a few additional prerequisite courses to get into the program. So if you do the math, if you take four classes per quarter, over your four years at Northwestern, just the three standard academic year classes, or quarters rather, you're only gonna spend about a third of your time in your specific major. The other two thirds of classes that you'll take are gonna be made up of distribution requirements and electives. Distribution requirements are similar to gen eds, but instead of there being a couple classes that all Northwestern students have to take, Rather, we're gonna have specific academic themes and concentrations that we'll expect students to fulfill to really get that well-rounded liberal arts education. So you may need to take three to four um, classes in the STEM fields, whether you're a STEM major or a classics major, music, journalism, you name it. Um, but you'll have a list of 30 to 40 classes to choose from to fulfill that requirement. So if you wanna take that high level advanced calculus course, you absolutely can. Also, if you're a little less STEM inclined like myself, you can take other courses like 
plant people interactions, um, or a variety of other really interesting um, STEM courses that we have available for students who want to dip their toe in, but might even be a little leery to explore those fields. All right, we want to make sure that you're able to get that well rounded education, but still getting um, a little push with some interest and a little um, internal motivation involved as well. So lastly, then the last group of classes you'll take are going to be electives. And those are classes that you get to pick whatever you want. If you want to fulfill all your elective space with a double major, you can do that. If you want to add a certificate or two or a minor, you can do that. If you want to just take more classes within your major, there's a ton of classes within the department that you may not um, need to take to fulfill your major, but you're just interested in, you can take those in that space. You can also just take random classes that have nothing to do with any distribution requirement or um, major requirement that you're um, looking to fulfill. Uh, for example, my sophomore year, I took a course called uh, Musical Films Over the Last Half Century, um, which looked essentially at musical films ranging from 1960 to 2010. Um, I came to Northwestern with no AP credit, no college credit to my name, um, but was still able to get that major, minor, and certificate and take classes like that one all within four years while also getting internships during uh, my time at Northwestern. We want you to be able to explore, take random classes, explore um, fields of academia that you may not have even thought of or had any exposure to while in high school. That's what college is for at its best. It's allowing you to explore, intermingle um, with other folks from around the country and around the world and explore different academic topics, have those really impactful conversations inside and outside of the classroom. Um, another big component though um, of the Northwestern academic experience is what you're doing outside of the classroom. You know, we want to make sure that learning isn't just contained in those classroom settings. We want to make sure that we're providing you ample opportunities to go and apply what you're learning. So we have spaces both on campus and around the country where students are able to do just that. For example, on the north end of our campus here, we have a space called The Garage, which is our innovation incubator where students who have ideas for startups or products can go receive mentorship from staff, collaborate with students, and also get advice from real entrepreneurs um, from downtown Chicago at our 1871 um, startup hub, and also alumni who come back to mentor students. Off campus, we have spaces in San Francisco and Washington DC for journalism majors, for computer science majors who are interested in tech and politics and getting to really surround themselves in the places where they happen. Beyond that, we also want to make sure research opportunities are available for students, whether in a traditional STEM field or something completely unrelated. I'll let Candace talk a little bit more about those. Yes, the first thing worth mentioning is that Northwestern allocates three and a half million dollars every single year for undergraduate research. So that's not for faculty members, that's not for PhD candidates, that's just for us undergrads. And like Fritz mentioned, there's lots of different ways that, that takes place. My friend CJ, who graduated a few years ago, was a bio major on the pre-med track. He worked in a skin tissue lab for the entirety of his Northwestern career, so starting his first year at Northwestern. I don't have the science background to really describe what he was doing, but he just tells the world that he was making a better place, and I believe him. But for me, as a heavily humanities-based major, I thought to myself, well, research is just for people who wear white lab coats and mix liquids. That's not something that I'm interested in. But I had the opportunity to partake in research my very first year here at Northwestern. I took a sociology course with Professor Patillo, who I loved, and one day I went up to her after class and said, hey, I'd love to know more about what you're working on. She told me about this research project that she had going on in downtown Chicago, and she also told me that if I helped her out on it, I could get paid, so I signed up immediately. And I got to work with Dr. Patillo for six months, uh, analyzing the positive benefits of living in a Black community with Chica in Chicago. And with that, it was a great experience being able to go downtown a bunch, being able to, yes, of course, get paid, but also being able to develop a strong relationship with this professor. Now that I am roughly two and a half months out of college, she was the first person that I messaged saying that I was moving back to Chicago, and we've already planned a socially distant uh, lunch to have once I moved back. Um, but research happens, yes, of course, in the Chicago area, but also can be a little bit farther. One of the more popular or most famous research opportunities is the Circumnavigators Grant. And it's a $9,000 grant that's given to one rising senior every single year, and they're given the opportunity to study one research topic around the world. 
is only two rules. They have to go to at least five separate countries on three separate continents, which kind of just sounds like a paid vacation, but someone gets to do that every single year. A few years ago, my friend Hannah, who graduated as a music education and social policy double major, studied how music, ed music education looks across the world and how gender affects that. So she got to travel from London to Kenya, India and New Zealand and got around the world in 80 days. And most recently, my friend Chris, who was a religious studies and voice uh, dual degree, studied how Baha'i music looks across the world and is now taking the research he started on the Northwestern Circumnavigators grant to complete his Fulbright in the upcoming year. But uh, research is one of the many ways that students are able to have an international experience. Around 50% of students have some sort of international experience and around 33% of students have a traditional study abroad experience. I had the great fortune to study abroad this past year, this past fall in Milan, Italy in a music program. And I can go on and on and on about study abroad, but two great things worth mentioning specifically about studying abroad at Northwestern is that um, your financial aid goes abroad with you when you study abroad. As well, uh, we have academic advisors across all the disciplines. So if you're a music major like me, an engineer or an international studies major, you have the opportunity to study abroad and make sure your academic credits count. So studying abroad at Northwestern is never a question of if you can afford it or if you can graduate on time, but truly just a question of where do you want to go? In fact, my friend Jane, who was a journalism and music dual degree student, studied abroad during the spring break of her junior year. It just was the time that worked best in her schedule. And she got to intern with the Globe Theater during that spring break. And similar with research, yes, you can intern abroad, but you can also intern a lot closer to home. Um, if you were inside our admissions office, we would have this lovely slide of all the different places where Northwestern students intern. I can just speak from my personal experience and my friends. I've had friends who have interned with top consulting firms that have now gone on to work with them full time. I myself have worked with um, top five publishing companies and have worked with nonprofits. And a lot of the career and internship possibilities that we know about are brought to us by Northwestern Career Advancement. And some of them are even built into our curriculum. Some more famous ones, specifically in the College of Arts and Sciences, we have a, problem, or a, a program called the Chicago Field Studies Program where students are able to intern in the greater Chicagoland area and also receive academic credit for it. And there are similar programs across the undergraduate schools. And um, that Northwestern Career Advancement that I mentioned earlier is just an office on the northern side of our campus. They'll help you maybe brush up your interview techniques. For me, my junior year, I had three roommates and I had to do an interview at 7 a.m. So they gave me a nice shiny room that I could have my virtual interview in. And what's great about NCA is that they also work with students, not just as their undergrads, but also once they've joined the alumni network, which now I can say I'm a part of. And our alumni community, which Fritz can even talk more about, is a phenomenal um, group of people. For me, as a Northwestern student who was looking for a job post-grad, it truly was the Northwestern community that actually helped me find my first job. I was looking for places and I reached out to a Northwestern alum who graduated before I even attended Northwestern. He was the first person to make sure that the hiring manager saw my interview, guided me across the entire hiring process, and now I'm actually going to work with this environmentally, um, environmental adequacy group with him this upcoming week. But Fritz can speak more about all of the lovely people who have attended Northwestern in the past and what they're up to now. Absolutely. I just want to reiterate on what Candace just touched on there. The Northwestern Network is really invested in assisting students as they find their um, selves leaving Evanston and entering the real world, as we like to call it. Um, but they're just so um, committed, not only as they bridge that, but also coming back during the undergraduate experience and really being there to um, allow students to um, engage with them in conversations and to really keep um, a thumb on what's going on on campus. What, what are students engaged in? What's, what is the current news? What's changing? Coming back, you know, I graduated in 2014 um, and joined the office um, in 2016. And even in those couple of years that I was gone, um, the amount of construction and change that had occurred um, was pretty impressive. So alums are always really excited to see what direction Northwestern is heading in and getting that opportunity to continue to engage um, with current undergrads. Um, but as Candace said, we have a pretty world-class alumni association. 
Um, back at the visitor center, um, we just have a wall of alums who we highlight. Um, I already dropped a few names at the start of the program. Um, a couple other folks um, worth um, mentioning, in my opinion, um, would be um, someone like um, Ginny Rometty, the CEO at IBM, got her start at the McCormick School of Engineering, stuck around and also received her master's here at Northwestern. Um, folks like Michael Wilbon and J.A. Adande um, of sports journalism fame got their start at the Medill School of Journalism. Um, whether you're looking in the financial sector, in the theater, in the performing arts, um, or in activism and social justice, Northwestern alums are everywhere and are really not only excited um, about their alma mater, but excited about helping fellow Wildcats as they f get their foot in the door um, out in the real world and many, many years after. Um, so with that all in mind, that kind of wraps up our academic discussion of Northwestern. So we're going to transition a little bit more now to um, the student life perspective. And with that, I'm going to let the recent grad kind of take the wheel for a bit before coming back in to talk a little bit about our location. For sure. And this is actually my last information session that if I'm giving with Northwestern. So if I get a little bit sentimental, that's why. But um, I think I've talked a lot about why I decided to apply to Northwestern. I think what is <clears throat> just as equally as important, if not more important, is to talk about why I decided to stay at Northwestern. And for me, I found that um, during my time in Northwestern that people are just as kooky and as interested in all the weird passions you may have. And it's really easy to find a sense of home here at Northwestern. And part of that starts with your physical home on campus. We have a lot of um, other panels talking about residential life, but I'll just briefly go over our residential experience here at Northwestern. We do have a um, on campus or two year on campus living requirement and students have a wide away array of court of different places that they're able to choose from to live and there's lots of different programming, whether it's uh, Thirsty Thursdays that you can get free coffee and tea or midnight munchies where you can get free snacks. You know, anything about college students, if you put free in front of anything, we're usually more than, <laughs> more than excited to partake. Um, but also we have our Wildcat Welcome, which is our first year and transfer orientation for new students. With that, you're paired up with a peer advisor who's just a few years older than you and anywhere between 18 or eight to 15 students that are either in the same major or taking the same course as you for your first year. And that peer advisor leads you through a bunch of campus traditions, whether it's marching through our Weber Arch and hearing a speech from our president, Morty Shapiro, or dashing across our football field for our first home game during football season, which if there's anything more magical than just seeing a sea of purple running across a football field, I don't know what there is. And we also have um, a bunch of significant spaces here on Northwestern's campus that actually um, line up alongside our campus. So those places include the Black House, the Shield Catholic Center, the Multicultural Center. And these are just a bunch of spaces where students can explore parts of their identity that they may or may not have been able to explore during their high school experience. On top of that, we also have over 500 student organizations, which is a lot. And they range from the ukulele club that plays on the lake fill when the weather's nice, or uh, the happiness club during finals week when the libraries are open 24 seven, you can find them literally throwing candy at students as they're studying, which if that doesn't make you laugh, that's probably more than enough reason to take a break from studying. But if you look at this wide array of um, different student organizations, you think to yourself, wow, there's something that I did in high school that I really love that's not represented, or I just want to try something new. It's very easy to start your own student organization. All you need are four friends and a faculty advisor, and boom, you got a new student group. In fact, five of my friends my first year wanted to start their own acapella group, even though we had roughly 12 at the time, because they not only wanted to sing pop music, they also wanted to sing church hymns. So my five friends got together. Our choir director is now their faculty advisor, and they're now a recognized student organization and a cappella group known as Tempo Tantrum. And they started off as a motley group of five members my first year. Now, having just graduated, I think they have over 16 members. And I think that just goes to show how I talked about earlier. If you're interested in something, you're going to find a really strong, passionate group of students who are just as interested in it. One of my favorite student organizations that I was a part of, in addition to acapella, was also being a Posse Scholar and being a peer uh, counselor for the Posse Foundation on Northwestern's campus. And so with that, I got to guide incoming Posse Scholars all about the aspects of eating in Evanston, traveling to Chicago, which also make Northwestern feel a lot like home. Absolutely. Um, cultivating that home 
feeling in college is one of the most important things I think a university can do um, for any student that is beginning their journey. Um, and it's, it's really, I think, going to be critical wherever you guys end up. Um, finding a place that really matches your needs. Um, you know, colleges are scattered all across the country and we have, you know, a variety of different locations. You might be interested in a more rural location um, for a college setting where it's you're really in that college experience. Maybe you want more of a college town um, where there's a lot, there's a little more happening beyond just the college itself. Um, or maybe you want to be in that immersive urban college experience where the campus is just one piece um, of everything else going on um, in your environment. And, you know, students are coming from all different perspectives and seeking different things. Um, so location, in my opinion, is a really um, important part of the college search process. And here at Northwestern, we have a trifecta of locations. Um, so we have campus itself. That's just a mile long stretch of real estate right here on the banks of Lake Michigan. Um, state of the art uh, facilities in terms of classrooms, research labs, recreational facilities, you name it. There's never been a better time to come to Northwestern than the present. The second piece to that trifecta though is Evanston, the suburb where Northwestern is located. Um, Evanston has all those college town amenities you'd come to expect, those coffee shops to steal away to get some hard hitting studying done. If you've seen those library walls enough for one quarter, you have beautiful green spaces to go, relax with your friends, go jogging along the lake, really cool cultural spaces like the Baha'i Temple, beautiful work of architecture, northwest of campus, about a 15, 20 minute walk. And also Evanston is home to the um, greatest restaurants on the North Shore, the stretch of neighborhoods and suburbs um, north of the city of Chicago. So at some point in your college career, you're probably going to need a break from the dining hall and having great options just a stone's throw from campus is a pretty nice commodity um, that I don't think can be understated. Um, the last piece of the location trifecta is Chicago. Having the Windy City at our disposal, I truly believe amplifies the Northwestern experience. I'm originally from a 40 person village in rural Eastern Iowa. To say I was intimidated by Chicago would um, be putting it mildly, um, but being able to go and explore Chicago on the weekends for class with friends, um, with classmates, really allowed my own education to grow in ways far more than just for an academic purpose. I got a real world education while getting a world class academic education at Northwestern. Um, both our medical school and law schools are located in downtown Chicago. So to get downtown is relatively easy. We have an inner campus shuttle that runs between the Evanston and Chicago campuses. All you have to do is show your wild card, our form of identification, hop on the bus 45 minutes later, you'll be at the start of the Magnificent Mile, which is great for some high-end shopping or top quality people watching. Um, in addition to academic and professional opportunities downtown, you're gonna have world-class culture, arts, entertainment, athletics um, to go and experience as a Northwestern student. But ultimately, I think what really makes Chicago such a wonderful part of the Northwestern experience is the fact that it's really just a city of neighborhoods. There's so much neighborhood pride in Chicago and so many different cultures scattered across Cook County here that whether you wanna have that authentic Mexican meal in Pilsen or celebrate Oktoberfest in Lincoln Square, you're gonna have those opportunities um, while at Northwestern. You don't have to necessarily travel abroad um, to get that worldly global perspective. Having that all just down the road here in Chicago, I think really, really amplifies the Northwestern education. Uh, Candace, is there anything in particular that you've really grown to love about having Chicago or Evanston um, as part of the Northwestern experience? I think the accessibility through classes has been something that I've really loved. I always thought that I would have to make time to go to Chicago, but really Chicago is another asset that's been built in and used in the curriculum. One of my favorite examples is I took a course with Bill Savage uh, in the English department called The Chicago Way, and we read a bunch of works by Chicago authors are about Chicago. And we ended the course with a 
roughly five hour bike tour of Chicago, ranging as north as Wrigleyville, as south as the Sox Stadium. And once we finally finished, we got to have a um, burgers and fries at our professor's favorite um, dive <laughs> restaurant, and he paid for all of our food. So food, classes, the city, all great things in my book. Awesome. Thank you, Candace. Um, all right, so for the remainder of the time, I'm gonna talk a little bit about admissions and financial aid, and then we're gonna open it up for questions. Um, so if you have questions, I know we're already receiving some in the YouTube live chat here to the side. Um, feel free to continue sending those in, and we're gonna try to get to as many of those as we can here before the end of the hour. So let's talk a little bit about the admissions process. Um, at Northwestern, we have a holistic review. Um, which means there's not going to be one piece that makes or breaks your application to Northwestern. All right, you are more than your grades, you are more than your activities, you are a whole person with a bunch of different parts. Um, and we're going to evaluate all those parts that are part of the application um, for us to determine how to build our class. All right, um, Northwestern has both the common application and the coalition application. You can submit either type um, to Northwestern. When we are looking at an application, the first thing that we do is try to understand what environmental context you're coming from. All right, what sort of educational opportunities, academic, extracurricular, you name it, have you had afforded to you? You know, are you going to a school where there's a ton of AP classes? Are you going to school where there's no AP classes? Are there a ton of extracurricular activities? Are there no extracurricular activities? Are you going to school in the time of a pandemic? when all opportunities are quite limited, all right? We're gonna take all of this into context as we review your application, and we're only going to look at you within those opportunities that you've been afforded, all right? So I know we've been getting a lot of questions here over the past several months about how we're gonna be reviewing applications um, in light of the COVID-19 pandemic know that we are working our hardest and we're going to be really mindful about what class opportunities you've been able to access, what grades may look like. This year we have gone test optional because um, we recognize the ability for students to get and test is severely um, impacted. So th therefore this year, the SAT and ACT will be strictly optional. If you've already taken it and feel that it would be a good piece to add to your application, you're welcome, but you will not be um, by any means um, negatively impacted if you choose not to submit a test score, all right? So with that, let's talk a little bit about the parts of the application for the 2020-2021 cycle, all right? so. The first thing that we look at when we are reviewing an application is a school profile. This is something that your high school counselor will submit on your behalf. And it really outlines what classes are available at the high school, what extracurricular activities are popular, what type of demographics and the population of the school are. So we kind of get that environmental context right off the bat. Then we're gonna look at your transcript. We're gonna see what classes you chose to take and how you performed in those classes. So right off the bat, we're gonna get a good idea of your rigor and your achievement. Then we're gonna look at at least two letters of recommendation. Um, usually one will be from a counselor. The second one will be from a teacher. You are welcome to submit additional letters of recommendation. Um, just I ask that you don't submit three letters of recommendation for three different math teachers to show me you're really good at math and you're excited about pursuing engineering. I promise I'll get that from one. Um, the key to picking a good letter of recommendation, everyone, is really to think about who is going to be your strongest advocate. Don't worry about it necessarily being the right subject for what you want to major in. At the end of the day, we want to know who is who you are as a person, how you perform in the classroom, but also um, all those other intangibles that we're not going to get to see in the other pieces of the application. And that's a really great way for the letter of recommendations to showcase that. Um, also feel free to submit, you know, if there's someone outside of the academic contact or the academic setting rather, um, you know, a coach, an employer, um, a mentor, um, those are also very welcomed in our process, all right? Then we're gonna ask for a list of activities, highlighting any sort of leadership roles you've had inside or outside of school. And then we're also gonna ask for two letter, uh, two essays. All right, so one essay is built into both applications. Um, it's the personal statement. All right, if 
five, six, seven hundred words. Um, I believe there's like 10 different prompts. Um, and really, you can choose whatever you want to write about. The key with writing a compelling essay um, is really about crafting a narrative that really, I think, um, expresses your ability to tell a story. All right, we have a very full length video on our YouTube channel um, where our um, director of admission, uh, Liz Kinsley and our and a senior assistant director, Jackie Marthouse, um, discuss the how to craft a really compelling essay um, for your college application. So definitely give that a look. They talk about a lot of great things in there um, that I think would be really beneficial as you embark on that here in the coming months. Um, then there's also a second app essay that we're going to ask you to submit for Northwestern. And that's essentially asking, why do you want to attend Northwestern University? Okay. Um, it's a pretty common prompt if you're looking at a lot of schools like Northwestern, but don't fall into the trap of really making a one size fits all essay because it's a common prompt. All right. It's pretty obvious to see when a student is painting with a broad brush and not necessarily diving into the detail that's actually motivating you to apply to that institution. You know, a lot of students, um, when I'm reading those Wild Northwestern essays, will talk about being near a large metropolitan area, having world-class academic opportunities, um, and having maybe like division one sports. All those things are true, but they're not unique to Northwestern. You know, is there a specific faculty member that you want to have class with or conduct research with, like Sir Fraser Stoddard, who won a Nobel Prize in Chemistry several years ago, who has undergrads working in his research lab. Maybe there's a class you really want to take, like Introduction to Russian Literature, the most popular course at Northwestern. I took it my sophomore year, my life has been forever changed. Um, maybe there's um, one of the student groups, you know, Candace highlighted several really exciting ones. We have so many. Take a look through Wildcat Connection. Um, it's our website that essentially is the directory for all student groups at Northwestern. See if there's an interest there. Write about that. You know, we really just want to see that you've done your homework on Northwestern and you have a clear understanding of how you'll fit into the community here um, in Evanston. So as long as you're able to accomplish those two things, you're gonna be great. It's only 300 words. We're not looking for a great work of prose, um, but we just wanna show that you've put some thought into why you're actually applying to Northwestern. Again, it's a holistic process. So there's not gonna be one piece that's gonna be weighted more than the others. We're looking at you as a whole student, but also do recognize that at a school like Northwestern, we have the luxury of having more qualified applicants than we do spots. So just because, regardless if you end up applying to Northwestern, if you end up applying to a highly selective institution, do not let any admit letter boost your ego or any denial lower your self-esteem. That is not what this is about. All right. At the end of the day, institutions are really looking to build diverse classes in terms of academic interests, in terms of lived experiences, um, and really trying to cultivate a campus where students are learning as much from each other as they are from faculty and the books that they read on a regular basis. All right. There's going to be two ways to apply then um, to Northwestern. We have an early decision process and a regular decision process. Early decision will be due November 1st, and this is a binding application process where you will be expected to attend Northwestern if you are admitted. All right. If Northwestern is your dream school, you bleed purple in healthy ways, I'd encourage you to apply early decision. If Northwestern is just one of many schools that you're considering, I'd encourage you to apply the regular decision, which will be due January 3rd, and you'll be able to compare all of your admission offers um, about a couple months later once those decisions are released. Now, because Northwestern has seen an incredible increase in applications over the past decade, largely thanks to the Common App, making it easier to apply to more schools than ever before, it's become harder for us to determine who really wants to be part of this campus community versus who wants to see if they can just get in. So because of that, we have started to take half the incoming class via early decision, all right? Um, that doesn't mean that it's necessarily easier to get into Northwestern um, because the type of students that we're seeing apply in the early decision cycle are every bit as competitive as those in the regular cycle, um, if not more so because they know they wanna get into a school like Northwestern. Um, 
But at the end of the day, we want to have a campus full of students who are really excited to be attending Northwestern. That being said, picking a college is not only about the academic and social fits. Financial fit has to be a major factor in this decision process as well. Um, so at Northwestern, um, we really have worked to make sure that Northwestern is financially feasible for a all varieties of uh, in family incomes um, and, and income levels, all right? Over the last several years, we've really ramped up our financial aid giving, um, and the majority of Northwestern students do receive financial aid. That being said, given the caliber of Northwestern student, we only offer need-based financial aid, all right? Given, you know, the academic backgrounds and achievement of our students, it gets a little political for us to determine who deserves what merit-based aid. So we've really focused on improving our socioeconomic diversity um, on our college campus, all right? That being said, like I said, the majority of students are receiving financial aid. And for this upcoming school year, we've actually set aside more than $200 million um, to assist our students um, in affording a Northwestern education. Um, and we guarantee that we'll meet 100% of demonstrated need. So if you take the total cost of attendance and subtract your family's um, expected contribution, um, your EFC, that's determined by the FAFSA and the um, CSS profile through College Board, whatever remains is going to be your expected need, all right? So we're going to, or will be your demonstrated need, rather, excuse me. Um, we're going to meet that 100% with grants, scholarships, and work-study funding. As of about five years ago, we went loan-free. So if you do receive financial aid um, through Northwestern, it's very possible you could graduate debt free um, upon graduation, which is a pretty great deal as someone that graduated before the loan free policy went into effect and continues to pay his monthly um, student loan payments. So with that in mind, um, I would encourage you to go on to our website um, and look up our net price calculator. This is a tool that all colleges and universities are required to have um, by the Department of Education. And it's supposed to give you a really accurate estimate of what it would cost you specifically to attend that school. At Northwestern, we worked really hard to make our calculator really accurate. So if you've, you'll need some basic tax information um, from your 2019 taxes, um, and then You'll plug that in and it's going to then spit out what your family's expected financial contribution would be. And that should be pretty close um, to what you would be expected to pay um, if you were to attend Northwestern. Definitely follow up with the financial aid office. They're readily available via phone or email um, to discuss um, financial aid in more detail. But just know that's a great resource um, to help assist you in figuring out the financial fit of Northwestern as well. So with that now, I'm going to take a quick pause and we're going to switch over to the questions. And it looks like we have a perfect question right off the bat here um, for Candace. So I'm going to toss this right at you. Um, what is the course load like for a music double major? Um, and what is the balance between time spent doing music and schoolwork? Definitely. I think it's more than reasonable. In fact, over 70% of students in the music school have an outside specialization. So whether that's a dual degree, in my case, a double major, minor certificate, I think one thing that's worth mentioning is the difference between a dual degree and a double major. For the dual degree, you'll be doing both the major requirements of your two specializations, but also the graduation requirements. So in my case, I did theory and oral skills in the School of Music to graduate. On top of that, also first year seminar, as well as uh, language courses that are required to graduate. However, for the double major, that can easily be done in four years, and you only have one home school and you receive one degree with two lines of specialization on it. And with that, you only have to do the graduation requirements for your home school. If you do want to double major and have a performance major be one of your majors, you do have to have your home school be the Bean and School of Music. But as when it comes to balancing the two, I think one thing that's also um, a good thing to keep in mind is that a lot of things that would be extracurricular are kind of built into the curriculum. So some of the required courses for performance majors are being in an ensemble because they want to make sure that you have that opportunity to perform consistently. And so while it may feel extracurricular, it's still technically you're getting course credit for that and it meets on a, a timely basis on the same time. So I think in general, being able to have multiple specializations is definitely encouraged. And I think the flexibility of the course system really makes it manageable as well. Awesome. 
Thank you so much, Candice. That's, I know, for students interested in pursuing music, a big question, um, given the conservatory style um, curriculum that Beenan offers. Um, another question that we received here right up near the top, um, what is one of your favorite memories at Northwestern? Um, I know for me, um, a moment that I'll never forget was my junior year. I was able to participate in our Washington DC based journalism program called Medill on the Hill. And I had the fortunate timing of being able to be there in 2013, um, which was then um, President Obama's um, second inauguration. So for that, I was able to go to a variety of events throughout the quarter, um, but specifically with the inauguration, I was able to go to the inaugural ball that evening, um, get to see fun, Jennifer Hudson perform, um, see the couple do a first dance or a second dance, I guess, since it was a second term. Um, so that whole um, quarter long experience living with about um, 15 other Northwestern students in various places scattered across Washington, D.C. Um, was a pretty special um, time for me and really opened my eyes um, to journalism in a new way that's pretty hard to replicate, frankly, in any other collegiate setting. Uh, Candace, is there anything in your um, memory bank that definitely will remain there near the top? I think definitely performing with Patti Lapone was has to be up there. Patti Lapone came to Northwestern for my voice teacher, Nancy Gustafson, um, um, runs a nonprofit that um, brings music into senior disability homes in order to help with um, Alzheimer's and dementia. And so she had a fundraising gala in our beaten school in which Patti Lapone was the headliner. And so me being in her music studio, she said, would you like to sing with Patti Lapone? And I said, of course. <laughs> um, and she is quite the character. And it was amazing also just being able to being able to sing alongside a musical great and being able to, funny enough, her music manager is a Northwestern alum, and being able to talk about the Northwestern experience um, with him and being able to work with a full-time performer as an, uh, as an undergrad was an awesome experience. Wow, that sounds so cool. Oh my goodness. Um, so uh, another question that we've received, um, how accessible are administrators, advisors, financial aid officers, et cetera, at Northwestern? Um, I know in my experience, um, they're definitely there to assist you. It may require you to be a little bit of a self-advocate to you know, schedule those meetings. And you know, this is gonna be, that's one of the big transition points with college. I think wherever you go, you're gonna have, you're gonna learn very quickly that um, to get what you want, you have to just be brave enough to go and ask for it. Um, because more often than not, people are so willing to assist you. You know, I think one of the best pieces of advice I can give to any incoming college student for Northwestern or elsewhere is to take advantage of office hours by faculty members, all right? Office hours are this time that's usually weekly um, where professors that are have allotted about an hour or two for students to come and ask them questions about the material that they're covering in class that they might be confused about or just want to discuss in more depth. Take advantage of office hours wherever you go, students, because that is where you'll form those relationships like Candace did, was able to with Dr. Patillo, that I was able to um, with Professor Whitaker and Professor Garnett that I had when I was a student and I still keep in touch with. You know, it's really through those opportunities outside the classroom that you really form those meaningful relationships long term and will really serve you um, and them going forward. Uh, Candace, what's your kind of take on the accessibility? Yeah, for me, I've never had to wait longer than a week to ever speak to an academic advisor, which I think is really great, especially when some issues, you know, you just need to get it taken care of. I think if you're ever against a deadline, you can just walk into your advisor's office. They're not far away in a bunker. They're very accessible. My music advisor, Dean Jacobs, and also she was the dean of the school and my personal advisor. I would just walk through on my way to lunch to the microwave and just see how she was doing and checking in on her. So they're very accessible. Excellent. All right. So another question we've got. Could you describe Northwestern student culture? Is it more collaborative or competitive? All right, Candace, your take as someone that's pursuing music, um, which is historically kind of considered a pretty cutthroat thing. How would you describe the Northwestern experience? 150% collaborative. I think 
for me, it was honestly surprising how much students were supportive because at some points we are auditioning for the same roles, for the same positions, same chairs if you're an instrumentalist. And I think it would be very easy for students to be competitive. But that's just not the case. Whether it's um, being able to meet in core, an aspect of our library and studying together, students will share their study guides and study notes and being proactive of making um, study things together. But also on the performance side, a good example of this is that um, for this past spring production of the main stage opera, I was uh, selected to be a, a main stage performer um, for that production. And I was in class, I had two classes back to back. So of course I didn't check my email, but the email of the entire cast goes out to the entire uh, voice department. And as I showed up to my next class, which happened to be choir, there were everyone saying, congratulations, congratulations. Congr and I was thinking, what? I was so confused, but people were going out of their way to congratulate me. Some of these people auditioning for the same part that I auditioned for. And I think that really just speaks to the collaborative nature at Northwestern, specifically in environments that could be competitive. Absolutely agreed with Candace's take there. I mean, I really think that the supportive nature of Northwestern is one of its more um, separating characteristics. Um, as Candace noted, we have a ton of acapella groups here at Northwestern. Those students will be at the stadium when college football is happening, all right? And what's really cool is those football players will also then be attending their acapella concerts and be cheering on their fellow classmates. They may not have any academic overlap. They may not have, they may not even normally come across each other on a daily basis. But there's such an investment in supporting each other's passions at Northwestern that it really does build this collaborative spirit um, that I think permeates the Northwestern experience. So yeah, um, great question right there. Um, and I think this might be our last question for the day. Um, are there academic support services on campus, such as tutoring, writing centers? Absolutely. Um, we have a writing center for students who may feel they just need some touch-ups or for students who feel a little bit overwhelmed with writing college essays. So no matter where you are in your journey, you'll be able to have support there. We also have an office called Accessible NU, which is there designed to help students with a variety of learning differences um, who can help find accommodations, provide you um, additional note-taking support, um, and a variety of other services that really make sure that um, if you get into Northwestern, we want you to thrive, all right? We, every student that we admit, we fully believe is capable of thriving, being successful and graduating from Northwestern, all right? So with that, we wanna make sure that we're supporting all of our students in that process. So we absolutely have a variety of academic um, support services, whether it's school specific, department specific, or kind of theme specific. Um, those are all readily available also on our website. Um, so with that, I'm going to let pass it over to Candice here for some parting words um, for you all as you kind of begin to embark on your college admissions journey. Yeah, one thing we like to end with is talking about our ROI Northwestern journey. And for me, when I first heard about Northwestern, I was a junior in high school and from Southern California, and my counselor sent me a really long list of different colleges and I saw Northwestern I thought okay so North, West, that's probably Washington State, Oregon area close to home sounds great and then I realized it was in the Midwest and I kind of got scared but then I realized that there was a beach that ran along the campus and I said okay I can take a look at this and like I mentioned before I knew I wanted to study both creative writing and opera and Northwestern was one of the few schools that offered both of those specializations as a major. And then on top of that, being able to have the dual degree um, was something that I knew academically I would be able to study what I wanted and be able to flourish with that. And one thing that I've grown to appreciate, especially throughout my time at Northwestern, um, was the academic exploration that is just so strongly encouraged. I had heard of my friends attending other universities and thinking that they would go to a course and say, okay, why are you here? This is not your department. In my case, whether I was stepping into a classics department, having quite literally, it is all Greek to me, or going to a ethics studies department, it was never, why are you here? It was always, oh my goodness, what are your specializations and how can we bring that um, to this new area of expertise for you? And now that I've graduated, I think what's made Northwestern so special is the people. Um, I think 
also too, sometimes you can find yourself in what I like to call situationships in that you're in the same class so you talk to each other or you're on the same hall so you talk to each other, but once that situation is gone, you never speak with each other again. At Northwestern, that's been exactly opposite the case. There are people who I met in one class and now they have been helping me in my hiring process to one person who we met because we were on the same floor in Willard um, Residential College my first year. And now he's helping me find apartments as I'm in the process of moving back to Chicago. And I think no matter where you are in your college search and journey, I think what Fritz alluded to before is that knowing that you know, nothing on your application is going to define you as a person. You will succeed no matter where you go. And if Northwestern is a great fit for you and you find yourself here, I hope that you enjoy the things that I've learned to enjoy and cherish. But I also know that no matter where you end up, as long as you have that perseverance and you ha still have that academic zeal, you will thrive as both an intellectual and a person. With that, I'll pass it back to Fritz. Hi. I couldn't have said it any better myself. So I'm just gonna leave you with Candace's words there. That's pretty much dropping the mic there from the 2020 grad. Um, so thank you all so much for tuning in today for our YouTube live information session. Um, be sure to continue to check out our website. We'll have more programming coming this fall, including student panels um, and more focused programming about a variety of different aspects of life at Northwestern. So be sure to keep checking back for new opportunities to learn more if Northwestern remains on your list of potential colleges. Um, we'd love to have you continue to tune in and um, ask questions and engage with us that way, given um, the times that we're in. We're trying to make ourselves as available as we can um, to make sure you guys have the information you need um, to apply to college. So with that all in mind, thank you so much again um, for tuning in today for our YouTube live session. We wish you all good health, a great start to your school years. Um, be kind, be well, and be yourself. And Go Cats.